Hi guys, today we're going to put into practice everything that we've looked at so far. So we've looked at lots of different maintenance, lots of different setup points in huge detail. So you guys should be pretty up to date on all of that kind of thing. So what we're going to do today is this is my Les Paul. It's very grubby. It's been used a lot. It's a working guitar. I gig this regularly. I play it a lot. I love it. I don't need it perfect, but what I want James to do is, is kind of demonstrate everything that we've looked at, give it a once over um, and have him sort of talk through what's, what's going on at the same time, just so that you guys can, can see you know, everything that he would normally do. This is going to be a massively sped up version. It is. Yeah, so, uh, we're going to do this very swiftly. Like you said, every point that I'm going to be doing is, is it's shown on all the other videos in great yep. detail. Okay. The first thing we're going to do is whip the strings off okay. and start cleaning that fretboard, okay? Um, I'm going to use the wire wool on the fretboard and the wood oil soap. The fretboard is quite dirty, okay? <laughs> um, so hopefully it will come up quite quite good, quite quickly, okay? Yeah, I mean... We'll also look, then look at fret polishing, okay? Sure. And I will just go over the frets with as many micro mesh papers as needed, okay? Okay. Um, so I'm quite excited about this. I mean, this this is definitely the, the dirtiest that I've ever let sure. any of my guitars get, I would say. This is pretty grubby. But I mean, it's, with regard to the body, it's going to be difficult to get it... We're not going to buff it back up to a, a high polish, okay? Sure. Fair enough. No, that's that's totally understandable. I mean, as, but we as, can, we can as, certainly as, go over it and make sure. a nice job of it, for sure. So just, just for, for those of you guys that are interested, so this is a... A 1979 Les Paul Pro Deluxe. Um, you know, it's 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 quite old. It's not it's not obviously not super super vintage, but it's it's definitely worth sort of extra consideration when you're dealing with a slightly older guitar like this. Sure. Which obviously, James knows. I'm not telling you, but. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so, so full zero wire wool is just gonna and some wood oil soap. This is just gonna lift all of that hard work off. Okay. Absolutely hard work. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So um, very grubby fretboard. So it's an it's an ebony fretboard, which is relatively unusual for a, for a Les Paul. But um, normally they're rosewood. But you treat it in exactly the same way as as I believe we covered in the uh, maintenance section. I'm dreading to see the colour of this towel after you've wiped this. this okay, I'll show this, you. This is going to be grim. Yeah, I'm going to need to wash after this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So yeah, it's pretty. Pretty rough, but it looks a lot, lot better, even just for one pass of that four yeah, zero, yeah. and and you'll be able to feel the difference on that, okay? Because yeah. you might not pick up on it, you know, you haven't done, but it would be a bit bumpy, you know? <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. I mean, it's now black again, like, yeah. like the Ebony should. And, and the nice thing is about those four, the four zero wire wall, it has just polished up some of the frets just a little bit, okay? Yeah. So, a bit of a judgment call here, I'm just going to go straight in with like 3,600. Okay. Grit sandpaper and just polish those frets up. Fantastic. I'll bring it straight up to a shine very quickly, okay? Fantastic. Something we covered on the videos. Yeah. So I'll just get a quick, uh, quick Yeah, try to get that. a before and after. There's okay, a fair, so. fair amount of even fret wear across here. There's nothing too severe at any one place, okay? So, you obviously play up and down the neck. <laughs> I, um, yeah, absolutely. Try. Yep, <laughs> and Sonic Position 1 in all different keys. <laughs> and then just to 8,000. Yep. Again, just to get them nice. So the purpose, I'm just trying to make it look pretty nice, okay? But it's also about how it feels once those new strings are on it, okay? Fantastic. So this was refretted um, maybe maybe a year and a half ago, so maybe two okay. years, something like that. Um, so the frets are much more much bigger and more modern than, than the originals would have been, or were rather, because I've had it for quite a while. Um, they were getting to the stage where they were pretty much flat on the fretboard, so I'm um, sure it was getting to be... Okay, so cool. those frets look absolutely fine. Yeah. Fantastic. We're obviously speeding this whole process up. I'd normally do, you know, maybe a couple more passes, but yep. you know, for this purpose, that looks great. Absolutely, okay. this is Olympic, Olympic pace um, guitar is. setup. Yeah. Just before, I'm just going to remove this bridge, okay. okay? Just so I can just quickly clean up, so it's not in the way. Fantastic. Okay, so now as this is a working guitar, 
it's obviously got quite grubby over, you know, the, Two the to amount three of gigs. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of work it's actually doing. Yeah. Um, so with a with an old, slightly older guitar like this, again, you know, vintage restorer. Some of the polishes we looked at, Virtuoso could be quite a good cool. But for the purposes of this, uh, just general setup of this guitar, mm -hmm. we just literally just clean off some of the grub. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna get straight in the back here and clean the pots out. Part of the electrical maintenance, okay. Fantastic. So just off with the back plate. Yeah. Slightly easier on the And we're just gonna get the switch cleaner out. Clean those pots out quick. I can use this fret guard here, look. Fantastic. He's done this before. So oh. um, the old uh, the old seventies. The secondary uh, the secondary shielding. Which probably doesn't work. No, probably, almost certainly not. It definitely doesn't work our, uh, where we normally do our videos in our, um, in our normal studio. We have a pylon overhead and um, this is probably the loudest of all the guitars that we have. I mean, obviously it has P90s, so, so they're not particularly quiet anyway, but yeah. it's, the shielding definitely doesn't seem to do all that much. So we're just going to get in here, clean each pot out. And then give them a little swizz round, just so we can work that switch cleaner in. Fantastic. So off with the... Uh, so hopefully that would have got rid of any um, crackling pots. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They've always been pretty good, but it's, it's yeah. you know, it's, this, is, this is maintenance, not repair. So it's definitely something to do regularly rather than... Uh, yeah, absolutely. Momentarily stepped out of character there. Started going for, for the advice rather than asking you what we should do, so I'll try and get back into character. Let's see if this box up. Oh, glue doesn't do anything anyway. That's fine. <laughs> I don't need the shielding. Okay, and just going to uh, okay, so bridge back on. Bridge back on. I'm going to put <laughs> the strings through the tailpiece quickly. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, so there's 11s going on here. Um, can yeah. really fully decide between 10s and 11s if they... And at this point, how, how do you feel the guitar is best set up? Um, I like it. I, I, don't, I don't need it super low. Um, okay. I, I like to have them a touch, I wouldn't say high, but I, I don't need it set up for, for sort of speed, if, if you like. It's, it's more sort of a bluesy setup just because um, I don't play particularly fast. Um, <laughs> I don't play particularly fast makes it sound like it's out of choice. Um, but I, I don't play particularly fast, so so it doesn't need to be super 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 low. So um, sure, whatever you uh, whatever you think really, but um, a touch above shred well, what, speed height. Okay, <laughs> well what I can do now with the new strings on, yeah, okay, uh, get them to pitch, and I presume you play in concert pitch in E. E. I actually play in E flat most of the time. Do you? I do, but well, let's um, set it up at E flat then. Perfect. Um, so we get to the pitch of the player. I will string up. Fantastic. I'll get a video of this. Obviously, we do cover this in the, uh, in and the stringing section, but it's it's always nice to see it done at, at uh, well, I wouldn't say full speed. It's like one and a half speed, isn't it, really? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, even in this context, it's you still, there's things you can't, you over. can't rush. <laughs> rush, yeah. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so we're back in the room. That was impressively quick. Sped up or not, that was fast. So, so now I'm just going to tune it to pitch, uh, up, up to your E flat, right? To E flat. It's, um, yeah, does it, does it make much, much of a difference to, I guess it, the tension's obviously a lot lower, but. Yeah, the tension being that half step down will change the relief in the neck a little bit. Yeah. Okay, as opposed to being at pitch. Sure, absolutely. But what I will be able to do now, once it's at pitch, mm -hmm. is, uh, is assess the neck relief. 
Okay. okay. And yep. measure that. Fantastic. It's getting there by the sounds of it. There's the fun in D sharp. Oh, really? Oh, there we go. Okay, Fantastic. and I'm not going to stretch the strings in right now, okay? They, they're stretching as we speak, but it, okay. they're, they're, it's enough to be able to assess that neck relief. Okay. And um, so we set the neck relief for um, eight thousandths of an inch. Okay. Okay. So we just check what it is. Feeler gauge. So feeler gauge going in. It's it's probably about right, actually. Is it really? Yeah. Let's just whip this truss rod off to cover. Okay. Yeah, don't go, don't go taking my truss rod off. Fantastic. Okay, that hasn't that hasn't been opened in a while, I don't think. It's just costing valuable seconds. Only when you rush in, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, but because it's it's a clean eight. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay and and you know we we should be able to do this on this guitar. I'm just going to tighten it the tiniest amount, okay? Okay. And you see that, that tiny little, just taking that slack up, just that tiny amount. Yeah, yeah, sure. So that will mean, because it was quite clean, right? Okay. This, this eight will, is closer now. It's, it's, that's a little bit better, okay? Right, okay. So there's so a little now, bit of room in there, right? Now we're talking in fractions of yeah. thousandth of an inch. That's, this is high precision. So stuff. also, now we just check the 12th fret height. Okay which should be 3.30 seconds, or I think in your case, 3.30 seconds, which that is 3.30 seconds going through the center of a string. Okay. okay. So you could quite, you know, quite easily class that as 5 64ths. That's 2.30 seconds, it's just slightly under. Okay. I think if you're in for some big bends, then, um, and for the purposes of, of this, we should just pull that action height up the tiniest amount. Yeah, that's fine by me, I, I do. But again, we're talking like a minor amount. Okay. Okay. I'll just check, recheck the tune in. Yeah, I don't want any token. I am, I am prone to, yeah, flat third bends quite regularly, and sometimes even more yeah. if I'm feeling extra, extra adventurous. Depends. Uh, depends how the gig's going, you know. <laughs> it's going really well. Then might try and pull out a few more. We'll see. Try and ruin the whole thing. Okay, so just over five sixty fourths and bang on four sixty fourths. Okay, perfect. Thirty seconds. Okay, perfect. Now there's no need to, or we're unable to adjust the radius there. Okay. Yep. Sure. So the last thing I would want to do on this is just stretch the strings in a little bit more and yep. then intonate. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm just stretching the strings in again uh, to to you know get them settled in. Okay? Sure. Okay. Fair enough. Bring them bring them up to the sort of I guess the sort of state that they would be in naturally after a few yeah. days, perhaps. Okay, so tuning up to E flat, e flat. again, purely purely for the singer. That not not uh, <laughs> not like my design. Although I I don't know. I do I do like the sound of a guitar in E flat. I have to say I think right a lot a lot of stuff does sound better in E flat. I mean, you know, plus it means you can play all the. Uh, Steve Ray Vaughan that you want to without having to tune your guitar and a lot of Hendrix stuff and yeah all that kind of thing. I'll check the, the intonation, okay? If it's wildly out, I might check it, try to check it in the playing position. Uh, as this is, you know, fairly well maintained, mm -hmm. right, and serviced, it should be pretty close. Great, okay. We've made a minor adjustment on the action height. Yep. Um, which may have changed the intonation the slightest amount. Okay. But as you can see, it's it's all pretty much bang on. Yeah, it looks good. I will just try check it in the plane position here though, because the great the lower strings just seemed ever so slightly sharp. No, it's absolutely fine. You see. Yeah, it's generally quite quite stable. Yeah, the, as a guitar, so I, I'm not surprised there's not too much difference between the uh, horizontal and plane position, just because the neck is. Pretty solid on this one, so. Uh, so that, that guitar is as such to numbers, all right? Okay. At the moment, but based a little bit on what you've said, mm -hmm. and also, 
you know, um, you could tell, well, I could tell beforehand, it wasn't a million miles out around. Okay. So there's a tiniest bit of room in the neck relief. Just, yeah. But, you know, that will make a difference because that could have been because it's just creeping. So all we're doing is just putting that tension back on it. Sure. So that's just going to hold it there. Stops it from moving. The action height just being slightly under. Okay. The, the, the sort of recommended height there, okay, okay. Um, for the style of playing and, and the strings, etc. Okay. Might make most bendings nice, bends nice and clean. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Um, the last thing would be to do is is just a, a little tidy up just to get out of there, get the truss recover back on. Yeah, perfect. A little clean up and then it's over to you to have a play and see what you think. Fantastic. That was the quickest set I think I've ever seen. Yeah, obviously it would take at least three or four times longer than that. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, yeah, and the rest. It's, um, but that was great, fantastic. So, um, it's thank now you very for you much. to try. Absolutely, well I look forward to, uh, I look forward to plugging it in. Um, thank you very much. I hope you guys took something from that. Um, I know I did, <laughs> but um, yeah, we'll see you next time.